we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength we bow down and worship him now how great how awesome is he together we sing everyone sing holy is the Lord God the earth is filled with his glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with his glory. The earth is filled with his glory. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It's rising up. All around, it's the anthem of the Lord's renown. Together we sing, everyone sings. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in echoing their joyous rings glow in excelsis deo glow in excelsis deo Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous wings prolong? What's the gladsome tidings be which inspire your heavenly song? Glory in excelsis Deo. Come to Bethlehem and see Christ whose birth the angels see. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Oh, 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 in Excelsis Day. Hey, find an unfamiliar face. Welcome to the Lord's house on this uh, fourth Sunday of Advent. That's where we are. How you doing, Scotty? Day, oh, glow. 
just how so wonderful it is, Lord, this season, opportunity to slow way down, re re reflect upon the great gift of your life, uh, Lord, given for us, dying on the cross for us, filling us with the Holy Spirit. Lord, we, Lord, we ask that, uh, that you would do that again. Fill us afresh, that we might truly worship you in spirit and truth. We ask it in your wonderful, precious name. Amen. Amen. Hey, take a seat. Take a look at the bulletin. See what is there. Uh, of course, uh, to, uh, the, immediately after the worship service, uh, potluck. All invited to uh, to stay and linger. Uh, folks from BBF Valley, Valley Bible Fellowship will be joining us. Great time for uh, uh, just a join together in good fellowship. And then this Friday, we're going uh, Christmas caroling around the neighborhood opportunity to invite our neighbors to our Christmas Eve service, which is at uh, 7 o'clock on Saturday. We're gathering at 5 o'clock for uh, kind of a potlucky soup salad kind of uh, meal before going out uh, and beating the main streets of Tehachapi, sharing Christmas joy as as we go. Um, you know, it's, it's not in the... Uh, following Christmas... Um, Every New Year's Eve, we do something called the Wesley Watch Night Service. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a service pulled together by uh, John Wesley, one of the uh, movers and shakers of the Great Awakening back in the eight, uh, 1700s, uh, an opportunity for us to reflect back on the year and recommit ourselves to the Lord uh, at the beginning of two, uh, 2023. Can you believe it? Um, so I encourage you to, uh, uh, to come out Saturday after Christmas. And we are gathering Christmas morning at 11 o'clock uh, for worship. Uh, anything else that needs to be brought to our attention? Yes, Christy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bell ringing at Albertsons. From 10 to noon is Larry and, and um, Christy, and, uh, and Scott needs a friend. 12 to 2 on, uh, on Christmas Eve. Very good. Anything else? The McMahon family will come forward to help us light the Advent wreath. You guys? Yep. Oh, Terry, you got something? Go ahead. Also, we usually, on New Year's Eve, we usually go to some area of the city and and hang out and do some witnessing. So we usually go to the bars, the Savannah Bar on New Year's Eve from around 10 to 1 and 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. I'm surprised I can still stay up, you know, that light, that late. But uh, if you're interested in doing something like that, because I, I think people like that really need us, you know, so if you are interested, let me know. Yeah, thanks, Terry. Terry, yeah, praise the Lord. All right, let's start here with the youngest. Here we go. All right, and light this candle right here, if you will, and then pass it to your brother. We light the first candle as a symbol of preparation. Try it again. And we light the second candle as a symbol of promise. We light the third candle as a symbol of justice in the great reversal. Then let me read Isaiah 9, verses 1 and 2. For there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. We light the fourth candle as a symbol of light. Jesus truly is the light of the world. Thanks, gang. Amen. 
Oh, man, what an opportunity to, to, to draw near to the heart of the Lord uh, in this season. As Jerry leads us, I invite you to, you know, I'm to come near, seek his face. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. And kindle on us the fire of your love. You can stand up if you'd like, or you can just sit down. Oh, there's victory in the Lord, I'd say. Victory in the Lord. Cling to the Father and His holy name. And don't go riding on that long black train. There's a long black train coming down the line, feeding off the souls that are lost in pride. Wales of sin, only evil remains. Watch out, brother, for that long black train. Woo! Oh, there's victory in the Lord, I say. Victory in the Lord. You can look to the heavens, you can look to the sky. You can find redemption staring back into your eyes. There is protection and there's peace of strength. Burn in your ticket for that long black Here we go! Oh, there's victory in the Lord, I say. Victory! Failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen it all. It's 
still call me friend Cause the God of the mountains Is the God of the valley And there's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again Come on church Cause there's nothing better than you, oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you, oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing. morning to dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who can here we go you turn grace into garden into ashes army you turn season to highway you're the only one who can you're the only one who can oh there's nothing Better than you, oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you, oh, there's nothing better than you, oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better, better than you. Praise God. And there is nothing at all better than the Lord. has all been said Thank you, Lord. and done. There's just one thing that matters. Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time.
Lord, your mercy is so great. That you looked beyond our weakness and find purest gold in my clay making sinners in to saints I will always sing your praise here on earth and forever for you've shown heaven is my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone a word from the Lord this morning. Is that Jerry? Yep, it's fine. Mm -hmm. You just saw Psalm 148 from the message. Have you ever read the Bible like that, it's really, it's a really neat version. 148.17 says that everything God does is right. Everything God does is right. Sorry. Everything God does is right. The trademark on all his works is love. And then in 14, it says that God built a monument, which is his very own people. Amen. Praise the Lord. God, just put yourself on it. Kids, your excuse for Children's Church, and let's return the Lord his tithes and offerings as we sing uh, hymn number 171, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It was brought to my attention that it's Charles Wesley's birthday today. Charles Wesley was the great hymn writer of the Great Awakening, um, John Wesley's uh, brother. Uh, hymn number 171, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, when Marcia is ready.
Lord, use these gifts just to reveal the wonder of your presence in the midst of life. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Please be seated and let's continue in prayer. Lord, it's good. Uh, Charles Wesley's birthday. What, Lord, what a, Lord, what a happy reminder of the, uh, well, the ancient witness of your church. Lord, in, in this Christmas season, well, this Advent season, Christmas begins next week. Lord, uh, th- Lord, this time to remember your ancient presence. Lord, what you had done long, long ago. Lord, to prepare the world for, Lord, for you to take flesh, to burst onto the scene. Lord, to live faithfully, to show us what true humanity looks like, and then to die on the cross, to be risen from the dead, Lord, so so the chasm between heaven and earth might be closed forever and that your spirit might indwell us so, so that we might truly become the true humanity you always created us to be. And on Charles Wesley's birthday, Lord, as we look back and we see what you have done through the generations, you have been faithful over and over and over again. And as Marcia has shared with me earlier, um, Charles wrote this hymn in the mid-1700s. Mendelssohn put it to this familiar tune in the 1840s, and your church has been singing it ever since. Lord, we are profoundly and deeply connected, certainly to you. Lord, and through you to those who have gone before us, Lord, that we might have every confidence of your faithfulness, of your enduring work in the world. Lord, even in the midst of confusing times, uh, you know, dark times, uh, disturbing times. Uh, Lord, in this season, uh, well, Lord, is Terry faithful? Lord, to be, Lord, to bear witness where angels fear to tread. Lord, there are those who truly sit in darkness and need to see your light, need to experience the fullness of your presence. Uh, Lord, help all of us, whether we're uh, with Terry on Christmas Eve, uh, bearing witness at some bar in town, or connecting with family, uh, friends. Lord, help us to bear witness to the reality and the wonder of you in our lives and at work in the world. Lord, we know you hear us. We pray the prayer you taught us to pray when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yeah, I invite you to open your Bibles to Luke chapter chapter 1 as we continue uh, in this Advent season, uh, taking a look at uh, Zechariah coming to see the light, him, he who was once sitting in darkness. But but before we do that, we, uh, we've got a, uh, a greeting from uh, Juan and Ailey, uh, missionaries we support. In uh, Mexico, I rem- I'll remind you, Ailey was one of my daughter Kelly's uh, disciples when Kelly was in uh, El Salvador, and when Kelly ca- came off uh, uh, Campus Crusade for Christ, we-, we adopted Ellie as our own. So Ellie and Juan, you got the volume up, Chad? It's very brief, just, just a brief greeting, and here we go. Hello, Hello dear your family, family from, from the Grace, Grace Fellowship. Fellowship. Hold on. My bad. Let's see if we can do. I might need that uh, those earphones, Chad. If Chad can get them to me in a hurry, because these guys are fun. And you got them, Chad? Here you go. Whatever you got, anything I can plug in. Okay, they're good. Thanks. Sorry, guys. The wonders of modern technology. Okay, this should work. Let's try it again. Hello, Hello your family. family. One more time, go. Hello, Hello your family, family from, from the Grace Fellowship. Fellowship. 
As always, it's an honor to connect with you. And we want to thank you for your love and support to our ministry and family. We wish you a Merry Christmas and that in the new year, each of you can be blessed with good health and that your heart grows closer to the Lord. We send you all our love and hugs from Mexico. Bye. Bye. All right, there you go. Wasn't that worth the wait? Mexico City. No, I think they're in Mexico City. Uh, they're, at, they're in headquarters, wherever that is. Um, Puebla, thank you. All right. All right, Luke chapter 1. Um, there we go. Boy, it's, it's a great moment. Um, as, as we're ruling in, into Luke, uh, it, it really is a, 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 just a rich, rich gospel. At the beginning of Luke, what Luke is setting up is, is a contrast between Zechariah, who is John the Baptist's uh, father, and, of course, Mary, who is the uh, mother of of Jesus. Uh, Mary, who responds faithfully to the, to the angel's uh, you know, message that she was to, to bear Jesus, let it be to me according to your word. I'm the handmaiden of the, of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And Zechariah, who, who, who was off base, who, who, was, who was confused, who didn't understand really what was, that, what was going on. And uh, as a rebuke, he became mute, couldn't speak until John the Baptist's birth. Well, happily, uh, John the Baptist comes, and uh, Zechariah uh, gets his speech back, and he sings his song, and that's where we are, Luke 1, 67 through 79, as Zechariah sees the light. Okay, follow along as I read. And his father, that is, Zechar that is John the Baptist's father, was filled with the Holy Spirit, and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke to the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the earth, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people and the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. And I just, to give light to me who once sat in darkness. I mean, that's what, that's what I hear as, as, as Zechariah is, 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 is singing this song of praise. As he was, you know, he was confused. He didn't quite get this. He gets this divine visitation and he, and he doesn't get it. And he was a priest. In the temple, and he should have got it. And when we look, and we looked at Zechariah a few uh, a, a few weeks ago, he he wasn't uh, you know uh, attentive to the scripture. He was he was uh, distracted by by more superficial things, and and he missed the he missed the message. But now he sees the light. He gets it. He missed it at first. But then he gets it, and boy, does he get it. So the question is, how did he come to the light? Okay, well, it begins with the old, old story. And, I, and I'm wondering, after Gabriel got that message, I mean, did, did Zechariah start searching the scriptures? Did, uh, did, uh, did he go back, you know, over the scrolls? Did he reacquaint himself with, with the old, old story of God at work um, among his people? Sure, sure looks that way. I mean, is this... As he begins a song, it is, it is thick with Israel's story. It'd be a, it'd be a good, you know, twenty week sermon series to take each of these statements and and unpack them in the light of the Old Testament of the old story. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, 
for he has visited and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us. In the house of his servant David, as he spoke about by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and, and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father, to our father Abraham. He's deep in the story of Israel. And when, when he talks about this oath that God made, this promise that God made to Abraham, he, he's talking about that time when Abraham took Isaac uh, you know, up, to the, up to Mount Moriah and, you know, to, to sacrifice him to the Lord. And, and, and just in the nick of time, if, if you remember the story, Isaac says to a father, you know, Father, I, I, I see the altar and, and I see the, uh, the wood, but where is the lamb? And Abraham said, the Lord himself will provide the lamb. I mean, this is deep, deep images that point right to Jesus. And as, as Abraham raises the knife, the angel stops him. And the Lord says, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son your only son, I will surely bless you. And I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Zechariah recognizes that what God is doing in his day is moving to fulfill the promise that he had made to Abraham, even as Rome has got a lock on Jerusalem, right? This 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 oppressive nation has, has you know has got the Jews uh, locked up. Zechariah recognizes that in his promise, even God is able to move in the midst of Rome, in order that the Jews might serve him without fear and holiness and righteous, righteousness before him all our days. And when you see that word serve, that, that simply means worship him, that we might worship him all our days in holiness and righteousness. Zechariah is dialed in now to the old, old story, and he's recognizing in the events of his life what was promised long ago to Abraham and just reiterated over and over again. So in Deuteronomy, these are the words of Moses. And when all these things come upon you, the blessings and the curse which I've set before you, and you um, bring them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you, and you return to the Lord your God, you and your children, and obey his voice and all that I command you today with all your heart and with all your soul, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have mercy on you, and he will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. At the end of De Deuteronomy, it's called the, uh, the blessings and the curses. Blessings for faithfulness, you know, and the curse for distraction, for, you know, for, for failing to, to serve the Lord with true open hearts, and the consequence was exile. And this is exactly what happened. Babylon, Babylon comes in, takes the, people, takes the Jews uh, out of Jerusalem, destroys the temple, des destroys the city. As God said, so, so long ago. Okay. He's deep in his story. Well, this is what's so cool for me. Look there. Um, well, and when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse was set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you. Turn to the Lord your God and your children. And, okay, Grace Fellowship, what's this word? Shema, right? It's here. It's here. So important for us to, that's why I always, that's why I always, that's why I always, Remind us. It's it's Shema. It's here with, with an open, faithful heart. 
that protects us from externalities, you know, thinking we can just do the do and, and, and we'll receive from the Lord what he wants us to have. Absolutely wrong, absolutely confused. When we think that, think that way, it's always been about hearing his voice, being alive and present to him. If you, if you hear his voice in all that I command you today and with all your heart, and with all your soul. Okay. <laughs> Another key element. And, and you see that theme throughout the Old Testament, that this call to seek the Lord with all our heart and with all our soul. Jesus will pick it up on the Sermon on the Mount when he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. See, G Jesus is is getting, uh, uh, um, expressing, you know, that reality that way. And, 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 and what the Bible recognizes is that we have a deep, deep longing to, re to be reconnected with the Lord, to walk with the Lord day by day, moment by, by moment. It's a deep, deep longing. And Moses is, is clear and the prophets are clear if we seek him with our whole heart, you see. Why? Because there is static everywhere. I was talking with uh, um, Chad earlier th uh, this morning about the static, the noise that, that is all around us, uh, uh, that keeps us from going to that deep, deep place, that keeps us from living from that deep, deep place. You know, I, just throwing out three Ps, right? Examples, pleasure, politics, and personal issues, right? All those things are, are pointing to a deep, deep need. But what we do and what our culture trains us to do is stay on the surface, to interact not with the, uh, the deep, deep longing within our hearts, but with this, you know, other stuff on the surface, okay? So Kyle the Grinch, Right? Pleasures. One of the great tragedies of our contemporary world is how, and you, and you hear me say it all the time, right? How our commercialized culture has captured Christmas. How was that? Three C's. Didn't even send that. Right? Ah, and parents, be careful. We reinforce pleasure seeking when we make Christmas more about what's under the tree than he who desires to be in our heart. Real dangerous. And the whole culture, everywhere we go, is about cultivating the pleasure principle. Right? Everywhere we look. As you know, we, we have we have desperate longing, but there's very little in our culture that directs our attention to, to the deep, deep longing. Rather, it has given us very easily accessible pleasures to grab hold of to try to address that deep, deep longing. We've got to recognize that. When we're, you know, when we're experiencing the lure of pressures in our culture and, and we're tempted to, to embrace whatever pleasure happens to be in the forefront of your mind, we, we, we can take a breath and recognize that there's probably a deeper longing that I can get in touch with, that the Lord wants me to get in touch with, a deeper longing you know, for himself. Politics. Same kind of di uh, dynamic. Uh, you know, the craziness of the past, whatever, decade. Uh, people are desperate for a reason to live, for, you know, for, for some kind of meaning for, uh, to the lives, to, you know, some, you know, something that they can give themselves to. And we're seeing, like, never, well, never in my lifetime, and I'm 62 years old, uh, I, I was a kid during the Vietnam era, so so maybe it was going on d during the Vietnam era, but people throwing themselves at one political flavor or, or another, one one political agenda 
or another as if that's going to satisfy. Is that, boy, if we just get the right politics, everything's going to fall into place and everything will be wonderful. True or false? Oh, man, desperately so. Desperately so, right? But it's amazing how social media right, keeps us spun up around, well, I say political foolishness. Is it important? Yeah, kind of. But easy for us to neglect uh, of the deep, deep, long, of the deep, deep longing that is really keeps that foolishness stirred up, and then we can then we can go to personal issues, you know, you know. In this, in our therapeutic era, I mean, throw throw out a label that you know that that uh, uh, that explains, you know, why you're a nut. You know? <laughs> and, there's, and there's all kinds of opportunities out there as the world is, is trying to, you know, focus our, our you know, our, our attention on, on one issue or, or another, and you just get the right counselor and you, and you, and you process, you know, whatever was lacking in your life growing up or whatever, and it's going to, it's going to fix you. Ah, there's some help there, but there's a deep, deep longing that Moses recognized way back in Deuteronomy chapter 30, right? We hear his voice, right? If we search for him with our whole heart. And that refrain gets echoed throughout the scriptures. And for us, oh, recognize that there's a deeper longing, a deeper desperate need in the heart of every human being that is only met when we meet him and we hear his voice. And we don't need to apologize for that, you know, if, you know, to, as we're witnessing with family and friends or whatever. Good luck with, you know, with whatever you're trying to do to satisfy yourself. It'll never satisfy because there's a deep, deep longing. Yes, right? And then there's a wake-up call. Now, that, Zechariah's wake-up call is when he goes numb, right? He, he disbelieves Gabriel because he's not anchored in the old, old story when Gabriel first you know, sh uh, uh, shows up to him and he should have because he's a priest. He's, he's struck dumb. That'll get your attention. There's a wake-up call. Now, there's two, at, I mean, there's two possible wake-up calls, right? One is getting, you know, thrown off the cliff, wake up call. You know, and that's how, you know, in the addictive community, they talked about I've hit my rock bottom, right? That's the, <laughs> you know, that's when someone ends up in prison for doing something stupid and, and, they, and they have their come to Jesus, you know, moment and say, you know, it's a true conversion and, they, and they've waken up that their life is, is an absolute the disaster as they've been trying to figure it out. You know, it's it's kind of like me waking up in the morning. I tell you, four in the morning, somewhere between four and four thirty, my eyes pop open, and I am and I am ready to go. I jump out of bed, get the coffee, get the fire going. Right, it's I. Right, it's a sudden experience. For some, the wake up call is is is, is that sort of thing. For others. It's more like Chris, right? Chris wakes up, comes into the kitchen. Woe be unto me if the coffee's not made, because that's my job in the morning, right? And she'll take she'll take a, a solid half an hour at least of you know that that million mile stare, you know, just waiting for her body to start to. Right? Some folks wake up slowly and after being married for 30 plus years that you know it's 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 kid gloves until she's awake okay some folks wake up slowly man this is an easter story it's not a christmas story but uh, uh there's a a fellow in uh, up in Sutter County his name was Carl Adams he was a he was the district attorney of Sutter County the town I grew up in and he attended our church and in his story of how, how he came to Christ, you know, he's in church. 
faithful in church. He was, he was one of the key leaders in the church. And, and, and if he were here, he would tell you that uh, he, was, he was part of a, uh, it was a Last Supper tableau, right, where there were a bunch of you know, guys from the church who were playing one of the disciples, and you had Jesus at the center, and it was just kind of reenacting the Last Supper on, on Thursday before Good Friday. And, and, and he's sitting, and, and he's, I don't know if he's John, you know, Apostle John or Peter, I don't know who he was, you know, but, but he's sitting there. And the person who's portraying Jesus is going through the, the blessing of the elements, right? This is my body, which is given to you. And how, as this church leader, <laughs> in this production of the Last Supper, he wakes up. He realizes, oh, Jesus died for me. <laughs> yeah, it was. it's a cool story because you would have thought he was a walking, talking believer. Well, he was a walking, talking church goer. But until that moment when, ah, the light came on, you see, woke up slowly. Yeah. But there's always a wake-up call, right? Sometimes it's falling off the cliff, I'm in trouble. Or sometimes it's a kind of a slow burn, right? And there's some, you, you could be anywhere in between there. But for the light to come on, right, there needs to be a wake-up call, right? And with that, Seeing into joy. Now, this is important. This is the Christmas season. <laughs> okay. Imagine being Zechariah, right? And it's easier for guys than for gals because pregnancy continues to be a mystery to us guys. You know, women, pregnancy, everything changes, hormones are flowing, you know. Women are alert to that reality in a way that bozos are just clueless to, right? And until that baby comes out and we realize it's real, been real all along, you know, at least that's my experience. Zechariah is struck dumb. And he goes home, and Elizabeth, his wife, becomes pregnant. And, 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 and she, Elizabeth, because she is old, realizes she knows it's a miracle. And John B. Zechariah begins to experience this. He's experiencing his wife's joy as that pregnancy takes root. And then lo and behold, Elizabeth's young cousin, Mary, shows up. And Mary is with child. And, and you've got these two, you know, an older pregnant woman and a young girl uh, who's pregnant. They're in the same household. And, and there's that scene. Remember that scene in Luke where where the baby leaps for joy in, in, um, in Elizabeth's womb, right? What is John doing? John's sitting down, and he's reading the newspaper. He's not, he's not, he doesn't understand what's going on. And all of a sudden, there are fireworks going off in his wife and in Mary. And, and Elizabeth gives this, this great blessing. And, and then Mary comes out with, you know, with, uh, 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 with her song of glory to the Lord. See, and John is there. And what's he doing? He's seeing into joy. See, he's got a wake-up call. Now he needs to come to a point of understanding. What in the world is going on? There's something going on that's bigger than me. There's something going on that's mysterious and powerful and glorious. You see, he's seeing into joy. This great moment in uh, Luke 2. This is a, you know, everyone knows this passage uh, when the angels show up to the shepherds. And in that same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy 
that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Anybody remember what happens next after the angels sing, after the declaration? What do the shepherds say? Anybody remember? Let us go see this thing right? that, that the angels have declared. Kind of seeing is believing, a believing. The church can say amen because it's simply true that the Lord wants to bring us into this new kingdom reality that, that, that has broken open into the world because Jesus came and died and rose from the dead, and now his spirit fills his people. That's not mere abstract idea. That's a kingdom reality that the Lord wants to bring us into, and I'm, I'm telling you, it's tied to this, this deep, deep longing. And I, every one of us need to, put to, uh, to wake up to, to this promise that there's, you know, there, uh, there's more than, than, than what the dominant culture offers us to the world. And what the Lord is inviting us to is to look into the joy. Yeah. Look into the joy that is present now because Jesus is alive and here by his spirit. This is what Christmas Eve candlelight service is all about. Okay. We gather together. The lights are dim. It's not holly jolly Christmas. It's not waiting for good old St. Nick. The whole service is in a minor key. Because Jesus came to die. Now that's a joy kill in the holly jolly Christmas. Which wants to throw out the lure as, hey, just spend more money for more pleasure to celebrate Christmas. On Christmas Eve, the church stands and says, no. That's not what Christmas is about. It's about a deeper joy. It's about looking into a kingdom reality that is elusive, that is lost to everybody else who's not looking. Are you tracking with me here? The Lord invites us to see into the joy. And as we do, we come into the light. The light bulb clicks on. Whatever image you uh, you want to lose. And look, and, and, and look how, how John expresses it. He's talking about his son, and you, child, will, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation to his people in the forgiveness of sins because of the tender mercy of God, of our God. And look what he says next. Whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high. Gang, the sun's coming up, man. The sun's coming up because Jesus has come. And the question is, do you see the sun? Do you see the light? To give light to those who sit in darkness, and this is why it's imp important, to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Have you been paying attention? you know that our culture is trying to live in the shadow of death. Deaths of despair. Ongoing turbulence. Desperate confusion. Tremendous fears. The best our culture can do is throw pleasure at it. And let me tell you, it's like throwing it into a deep black hole. But when the sunrise comes, when light dawns for those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, right, then we walk in the way of peace.
we realize there's, a re- there's an entirely different way of being in the world. And he calls us to walk in it. Will you bow your hearts and heads with me? Lord, we are heading fast towards the Christmas season here and, and, how, and how wonderful it is. To take time to remember, to enter into that, that old, old story afresh. Comes around every year, Lord, but for us to, to take a breath and to make the effort to, you know, to push away the, Lord, the, uh, the cultural accoutrements of, you know, of, of how the dominant culture celebrates Christmas and, and take this opportunity to look into the reality of joy that's captured in your scriptures. Lord, that's testified to in in, in the great carols of the faith, like Charles Wesley, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Lord, pointing pointing to a reality that you invite us to live into as, as light dawns for us. Lord, and not and not just for us, but for our family members, those within reach, that they too, Lord, might no longer sit in darkness in the shadow of death, but to discover the joy of walking in the ways of peace. Lord, give us opportunity this season, Lord, to and to bear witness to you, to, uh, to the, dupe, uh, uh, the deep reality of your kingdom presence. And, Lord, there might be somebody here who, you know, is, has, is, is just now waking up slowly to this reality. Lord, and I, I just pray that you would deeply affirm them and draw them close to you, that, you might, uh, uh, that they might know you, our Prince of Peace. We praise you, Lord. We ask you all in your wonderful, precious name. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing. Amen. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing's better than you. Let's just repeat that. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. go from this place full of his presence with this filled with his power and serve him for his glory both now and forever amen and all are invited to linger around good fellowship good good food in a christmas potluck praise the lord